started. A few people working their way in. So, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our first meeting of grad seminar in materials engineering for the, the spring 2020 semester. It's our first seminar of the new year. I'm Dr. Chelsea Hargather. I'm a professor here in materials engineering at New Mexico Tech. And I'd like to welcome our new students who are here for the first time. Yeah, I know we have some graduate students who are attending their first seminar, and also our returning students who are seasoned veterans at seminar. And moreover, we have a lot of visitors, I think, from not just New Mexico, but around the US and maybe even the world uh, that we invited from our group at Penn State to come and join this seminar. So we have quite an attendance. So I've also noticed a lot of familiar faces from around campus. So thanks for being here today. And you know, for graduate seminar, of course, my goals are to expose you to a lot of cutting edge research in materials engineering, just a, a breadth of research, but also to give you things to think about that go beyond just the science. And that's something you're definitely going to see today. So today, I'm, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, who is Professor Zikwe Lu from the Pennsylvania State University. And Dr. Lu has been a professor at Penn State since 1999. And before joining Penn State, he received his BS from Central South University in China, then got a master's at the University of Science Technology Treaty Beijing, and then went to the Royal Institute of Technology, which is called KTH, in Sweden for his PhD. And he did a variety of, of other research positions before landing at Penn State, but he's made huge contributions to material science and engineering throughout his career. And that includes uh, graduating 31 PhD students which I was number 20, so <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to, to have my advisor here speaking. He's published more than 550 peer-reviewed journal articles. You can wrap your head around that. He's been the pre president of ASM International on the board of trustees for both ASM and TMS, and has also been the editor-in-chief of the CalFed Journal for some, some years. So he's received multiple awards from professional societies and universities around the world for his work in thermodynamics. So Dr. Lee is going to present, be presenting on his TKC theory, which stands for thermodynamics, kinetics, and crystallography, but how it applies to your life. So it, it's a wonderful talk. And from here, um, I'm going to turn out over the talk to Dr. Liu, who also, it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, and thank you for being here on your birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. And it's, a great, it's my great pleasure to give this talk. and. Uh, I want to thank you yes, to, to invite me for this. Uh, I always like to talk with talk to students. All right, so I'm going to share my slide and uh, and talk. The title of my presentation is Dr. Liu's TKC theory: Do better than your best. Uh, so I, as the chair mentioned, my name is Zi Kui Liu. I'm at the Penn, Pennsylvania State University. Now we have a website here, and I got a new student a few years ago. He decided that maybe it's better with this name. So now we have also website. This is the same website. This was the same. Uh, it goes to the uh, same place. Now we have we got our spacelab.com. And so this chart uh, is about the uh, TKC theory. So the, the y-axis plus here uh, is energy. Energy as function of states. So if you're studying state to, uh, to one state, of course, you have a lot of states along the life. So there's the T here, as the chair mentioned, it stands for thermodynamics. The K here is the kinetics, and the C is here for crystallography. So when I lately want to give talks, uh, this kind of seminar, I usually ask questions to start. Because I wanted to make you uh, start to think instead of, you know, just listen to me. So. Before we start, do you have any questions? You can either put it in the chat or, or think about it. You don't have, if you don't have one now, uh, it's, uh, they can prepare the questions and ask me at the end. Any questions? <laughs> you cannot speak, you can chat, you can, you can type in the chat. I usually give people one minute uh, to, to think about it. So now we are 14.02.07 in my time here. <laughs> uh, 
All right, looks like we don't have any now. I, at least I don't see any in the chat. Uh, I could not see anybody raise hand or not, but uh, there's no noise. So I assume that uh, uh, you don't have any questions now. Okay, but please think about it. Think about what question you may have and uh, jog down or put it in the chat. You know, this is the advantage with uh, this Zoom system. You can put your question in the chat. Okay, it's 14.08. All right, so let's continue. So I will first give you a story. It's a true story of a grad student. I was many, many years ago, a young man traveled a thousand miles to attend a grad school. And after a couple of weeks, his advisor came back from vacation. And the student decided to go to see him. He went to see him for the first time at his home because, you know, the professor was not in the office. And the, the advisor told the student, and he, he said, I did not recruit you. You were assigned to me when I was on vacation. <laughs> then I want you to think about what would you do after hearing this? All right, so, so this, is, this is very important about questions, right? I started to ask you questions. There are two essential questions you should, one should ask oneself all the time. It's why am I doing this? For example, why I'm giving this simple seminar here, right? And then when you think about this one, then you have the second question, how can I do it better? So these are two very essential questions I think uh, uh, one should ask oneself every, t any, every time you do something. And it forms kind of habit. Okay. So we keep these two questions here. I'm going to answer these two questions at the end of my talk. So you think about this one, right? Think about you think about these uh, uh, these two questions to yourself. So you you are from the department of, department of material science engineering. So I put materials engineering first, right? Because you know uh, the science really started with engineering first. You observe something. So what do you want to do in materials and you? We want something performance, can do something for us, right? Then we look at a set of properties. So usually people stop there, right? You, you make it and then you come to grad school, you want to start a microstructure. You want to start how you make that microstructure. Then you see, okay, what kind of elements you should put together. So I call this one universal engineering design. You have a you requirement, a desire, and then you go through it, you, you make it. And now you, you decided, most of your grad students, you decided that's not enough. You want to go to grad school and study even more. So you go to science side. You want to study thermodynamics, kinetics, crystallography, and the defects, dislocations, stacking faults, and so forth. Then you say, now I can start to predict the properties. So I call this one forward scientific simulation. Okay. So if you, most of you have gone this one at least once, in your undergrad study. Now, some of you have gone twice. I know that the chair she has gone many times because she has to teach, uh, she has to teach, right? Every year. Okay. So what you do is that you study some of the dynamics, you talk about the free energy of, uh, Gibbs energy of individual phases, you talk about the diffusion, you talk about the microstructure, you talk about the interfaces, you talk about the product defects, right? This defects in the, in, in the phases, like is a, Point defect, dislocation, stacking faults, twin, twinning, as the kind of things. So you see, I had all the individual phases. So you're really starting, you start the individual phases, then put them together. So that's why we call the individual phases as the materials genome. It's the building blocks for you to build the materials. Okay, so that's why we start with the TKZ theory. Uh, I had this kind of a theory uh, before I joined the Penn State. But uh, since that, you know, as just mentioned, I graduated many students. So I found that this uh, theory I had, which happened to myself uh, during my uh, journey, I found it may be useful if I can formalize it and uh, talk with our students. Maybe it can help them. So it looks like it did help. For example, if you go to our website, look at the PhD thesis uh, they wrote in the acknowledgments. Quite many people mentioned about TKC theory. So, of course, that reinforced me that it's, it may be useful. So, what it means is that you can talk about this uh, 
take it seriously, it's the same chart. Now we talk about thermodynamics, that's a T, kinetics, that's a K, and crystallography, that's C. So you see it's a T, K, C here. So basically, we go through this one and understand what does it mean. Or oh, when you do the research, uh, uh, you, you understand what they, they tell you, right, in the class, when you talk to class or when you apply them. Okay, so that, I don't have time to show the YouTube, uh, but this is YouTube about tensor test. I don't know what tensor test is, right? You have done that. And uh, what happens is that this is a stress, this is a strain. Uh, so at the beginning, there's no stress, no, no strain, no stress. So when you add it, it's elastic deformation, right? And then you've got too much, you just start to plastic deformation. You did years, we call it. And then you have the strengthening, right? So you stay there, it doesn't increase anymore. And then you decide, uh, let's do something, uh, maybe we should do something more, get it more hardening, right? And then ultimately, you know, you cross the threshold, it gets broke, it starts to decrease, and then it gets broken. It's like a life journey. You were born, uh, when you were young, you were very elastic. And then when you become older, you know, you, you less elastic, right? And then, you know, you become steady state. Then you say, oh, I'll venture something out. And they say, okay, I'm going to retire. Of course, at the end, you know, everybody gets to be dead. There's no other way to end the life. But interesting is that this curve sounds very similar, very generic. But if you look at the steels we have, right? It's, it's all steel, iron-based alloys, right? Look at this, how different they are. Talk about stress, the strain, right? The plasticity. It's so different. What, what, what makes them different? Well, first is the heat treatment is different, right? You can take a different chemistry, okay, different chemistry, but the same alloy, you do different heat treatment, you get different properties. So, what is that heat treatment uh, or the chemistry is your experience, is your interaction with people, and what you learn. That's a truly machine learning process of your brain, okay? That's how you, your brain learns. Okay, so let's talk about the TXT theory. What do we mean? How can we manage that one, make it the most out of our life? So what is the thermodynamics? So dynamics actually addressed a very important question. The first question I had was, oh, why am I doing this? That means you have a purpose of it. Okay, so what's the purpose? That means so your next state, right? Uh, this is just the once, once, uh, one small portion of the journey you have. You start from somewhere, you end somewhere, right? So you have to understand both, okay? And the way you define the both, you have to find out what's the best way to do it. You find the best path, where to go from initial state to the final state. This is one dimension, it's simple, but of course, life is much more complicated. And then you have to say, how can I know the barrier, right? It's a barrier here, you know? You say from here to there, it's a barrier. It's, you cannot just go there. Like you have to work hard to get over the barrier. So TKC, TKC theory is really about define your goal, so know what you want to do, and then find the best way to do it, and then lower the barrier as much as you can. Okay, let's talk about thermodynamics. So when, what is the thermodynamics? Uh, I, if you look at my book, I have a book talk about it. It's a state of the system. Okay? So state could be stable. Okay, like this stable, right? Could be metastable, stable, unstable. So there's three states for the system. Stable, metastable, unstable. And then, if you define the state, metal stable and stable, then you can evaluate the driving force, right? Okay, evaluate the driving force. So, you went to the driving evaluation, you have to have a reference state. You can say, this is my reference state, or that is my reference state. I can do two different reference states. You take this reference state, this is negative, take this reference state, this is a positive. Okay. So, I have to define two states. And the driving force could be integral, when you finish the process, or could be differential, when you start it, okay? Say so when you start, you have to overcome it, right? So you can evaluate the initial driving force or the final driving force, okay, differential. And I also think of this one, if you look at it from this side, the barrier is here, but if you look on this side, the barrier is much higher, right? So it's a very important one, backward thinking, always thinking backward, okay? Think of where you start where you want to be. And then the driving force could be, depends on how you define your states, you could have zero driving force. That's why many people are bored, you know. They, they, they don't find it zero because they, they have zero driving force. But there's some many people, there are some people also, you know, get very frustrated. They, they get so frustrated, they even commit a suicide. Okay. It's too big driving force, they get crashed. So that is, that's very important, right? So you, you should divide, define two states. You have enough driving force to drive you, 
but don't drive you too crazy. Okay, that's about the thermodynamics. So that's what thermodynamics is about. So let's go to kinetics now, right? So now I have two states defined. Then you find that you have to overcome the states, right? Overcome the barrier to go down states. So the change of the state is about kinetics. So when you make a change, you have to make a disturbance, right? So you have some constraints. They have to remember that the time is locker scale. When you do kinetics, they always say that when you plot the process as a function of time, you always plot the time as a locker scale. So why important the locker scale? Locker scale is extremely important. That it doesn't have zero. Log is minus infinite. That's the first one. So the second one is that the 10 days today, it's 100 days at the other time, right? So same names in the locker scale. Okay, so this, the perspective of time changes at a different stage of your life. And again, back for the thinking, okay, because you need to find the best way to, to reduce the barrier, a right? lower barrier. So this way, it's very hard to see what the barrier actually would be, right? Both, you have from both sides. Look backward and forward, okay? Then you get a better picture of understanding what would it be, because if you look at only, only on this side, it's only half of the picture, half of the image. And stay focused. So you, you have learned the Newton's law, right? Newton's law is called the action and reaction. So the, the final force, the combined force de de determines where you go. The direction is very important. Just like you play golf, you know, some people very, hit very hard because of one direction. You know the direction is more important than the distance. So but now you see most of the external forces, because the constraints you have, they are kind of against the world of your motion. They want to constrain you, right? Because you make disturbances. So that means you can you have to control your you so your internal force is the major force you can control. So don't react, act. That's the key lesson here. So you then can control the direction of the, the final force to move you forward. So now you get direction, you get it yourself all the set up, then make sure that you reduce your mass. Okay, because acceleration is F divided by M. M is a mass. The mass actually is not only physical mass people are talking about, it's only mental mass too. Okay? So you don't carry too many bags with you if it doesn't help you. Okay? So if the mass is small, then your acceleration will be fast. Again, direction is important, right? If, because if this one is one direction, if a force goes one direction, you'll be accelerating the one direction. You'll be further and further away from your goal. Okay? So it's very important. Adjust your force and reduce the mass. Okay, so now think about a question I'm going to ask you. And you can think about it, you can ask it later. So, the barrier, why is this barrier? Why is this barrier for any process? Okay, then how to reduce it? Because one as easy as possible, right? As easy as possible. And it doesn't matter what you do, there always be barrier. So, you have to activate it yourself. How to activate You have to activate, overcome the barrier, right? When you talk about nucleation, you know that it has to overcome the barrier by thermal energy. Okay, so I want to give one slide how to activate yourself. Okay, this is the energy as a function of time of the day, usually. So you know, you sleep there, you have, uh, we've got steady, static energy, and then when you wake up, you start to do something, you start to eat your breakfast, and you build up your energy, and then in the middle of the day, you end up become top, the maximum, then you start to decrease, and then you go back home, you eat your dinner, and then you go to sleep, right? That's a typical day you have. But I think you can do, so, the integration of this area gives you work you do whole day. So how can you expand this area, make it bigger, or double it, with a similar amount of time? So what I have been doing for many, many years, is that I started earlier, okay? So maybe get up at 7 o'clock, maybe go to 6.30. I get up 6.30 o'clock every day. And then I start to, to start to activate myself. I get a hot, hot drink. Then I start to exercise, okay? Then I start to eat my breakfast. Then I go to my office. You see, when I get into my office, I'm already the highest energy of the day, right? Then I start to solve all the problems. I mean, you know, I consume my energy, my goes down. And at the middle of the day, my same kind of energy as usual people, but I continue to work on, right? Okay, now look at the two areas you have. I don't know if it's a 50% increase or 100% increase, right? It's probably 50%, at least 50% increase. That means same amount, same, same amount of time, you can do more, 50% or more work than otherwise. So that's why I can activate yourself. 
Okay, so now we'll talk about the, the next question is to reduce the, the barrier, right? That's Chris Lockery is about kind of coherent. So there's two micrographs here. You, you, you're a material scientist, this is a micrograph. I don't know whether you know these two alloys or not. You have not seen this before. These are the two engines we have in our modern society. This is aluminum alloys, this is our car engine. This is the aluminum FCC matrix. These are the beta double prime, a beta prime precipitates. The beta double prime precipitates. You see it's coherent, it's an atomic image. Another one, this one is our, is, is our turbine engine, turbine blade, nickel base of alloy. And the matrix is a dark field image. The matrix is FCC. The, the, the wider slots here, because dark fields, they become white. You take a diffraction uh, point, spot of this uh, L12 phase, it's all the FCC. So both are FCC, so they are coherent. So this two coherency in the materials make our life easier. So we can take drive cars. We can have our engine, uh, turbine blade fly, fly our jet engines. Okay. So the coherency makes them work. So okay, that means you have to be coherent yourself. You, we talk about your, your goals, right? your actions. Be coherent. Okay? I call it internal coherency. Then you're not going to be going with, with you got to interact with the people, right? Clean with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues. How can you do that, right? Help others as much as you can. Okay? But it doesn't matter what you do, right? You need to have separations, like the two different faces. If a single face doesn't work, okay? So that means you've got to create a mispeedity gap. This is both of them are mispeedity gaps. Okay? And this is less mispeedity gap. This is a mispeedity gap. This is a little bit off. Because the crystal structure is not that the same, okay? But this is exactly crystal uh, lattice structure, the coherent. So that means uh, you got a coherent interface, even though it's different, right? So you have to have something in common. The interface is in common, but you have your own difference. So that's why how it works, right? Otherwise, if you don't have these two, you could only FCC is not good. Only FCC is not good. Okay, you need two different things put together, but you want them to be coherent. Okay, so this is my TQC theory. So, from so the dynamics, the question is why am I doing this? You need to set up your goals. Make it quantitative. Make it multidimensional because you have multiple goals, right? And then you, can, you, 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 you can, then you evaluate your driving forces. You find that driving force is big enough. And they're motivated enough. Okay? But to do that, you have to define both uh, states. And then it's very important that you want to have all your forces pointed to the goals. Sometimes you can zigzag, it's fine, but don't go too much away from the direction you want to go. Then, got a reference state. This reference, thermodynamics, they're talking about reference state. So the idea would be when you, when you for example, when you leave a New Mexico Tech, that place becomes better because, because of you. So that'd be good, right? And then kinetics, what's the best way to do it? Okay? So, I understand everything, nothing is easy, okay, it has a barrier. Well, how do you, how do you resolve it, make it, make it easier? So, ask experts for help. Well, you want somebody else to help you, you got to help, us, help some, some other people, right? Now, of course, they are not the same people, because usually people you help would be, a, they are more expert than them, right? So, that's kind of, you can think about the, the university energy is concerned, okay? Then you find the best routes to, to, to do that, you kind of, you kind of think thinking backward. Then you have to be satisfied all the time, because everything you do, you have done, is the best that you could. But then you say, what, what, what doctor is saying that? Oh, no, well, this is what you have done, right, the past. But, uh, you know, next thing is that, how can you do it better for tomorrow, right? So, so the, better, the best and the better are different time, because you have, put, you have to put a time into your thinking. So Chris Larovy is how can I do better? Well, I create, inter create, create a coherent interface. Because for the coherent interface, dislocation can glide through. Okay. You don't pile up. What happens if the piles up? If they pile up, well, you're going to crack. Okay, you're going to break. Okay. And then, you know, you have to be elastic for me because for a coherent interface to exist, the both lattice, both faces must deform. They must deform elastically. Okay? So have to be flexible, make changes, make adjustments, but uh, don't lose yourself, right? That's be a speedy gap. Remember that you have to be 
USF. Okay, so that means now comes the question is I know you did everything there. So you didn't see, well, how, well, how can it be successful? I do TKC here, right? So how do you do it? Okay, so you have to first define what success, right? So you, I define the success as you reach your goals. So its goals become very important. And then, how do you approach this one? You have the communication. Okay, communicate with yourself. Make yourself understand your goals. Okay. And when you communicate with other people, respect other people. Because everybody's different. I have another story called the uh, 10 blind people story. How they uh, figure out what the elephant looks like. Respect other people. And how do you respect other people? You listen to them. Be positive and confident and keep a smile on your face. And in order to be positive, right, confident, you have to do your homework. You have to work diligently and thoroughly understand. Be rigorous on what you do. Okay? So, as a grad student, well, you have to look at the next step, right? You do this one, so what if you show your work? Why you create new knowledge? How do you know you create new knowledge? You have publication. That's always emphasis. Publication is important because that's the only way to show that you did something new. Of course, if you go to other places, the industry, you make your products, right? That's different, okay? But if you're a student, grad student, you make a product, and product can begin a publication. And then, you have to be results-oriented, okay? And you ask for wise. Learn from the experts, including reading papers, of course, and communication, okay? And go back there, right? So that you can just cycle all the time. So if you can continue to do that, always do that, and then become better and better, so now go back to the question we had at the beginning. Answer to the two essential questions. So first question is why am I doing this? This why here. The ask why is very, very important. It's extremely important. Okay? So there are a few whys you should ask. Okay? Before you ask why you have to set up your goals, right? Okay? So the first answer to that one, uh, to the why am I doing this is that what are my goals? So that's what I do. Align with my goals. So then you ask yourself next time, why do I have these goals? Is that because my parents want me to do it? Or because my peers think I should do it? Or I really want to do it? Okay, that's have aligned the outside and inside the alignment there. And then you ask your question, why are those goals important to me? Okay, first, why, why you have it, right? Second, when the, why? Why are they important? You okay, have to convince yourself it's critically important. What's your time to go to grad school to spend four or five years with that professor to do your project, for example? And get your PhD degree. So you see, at least you should ask three whys for any question you have. Okay. And then how can I do it better, right? So you have love, what do you do? You say, I don't love it. Well, if you don't love it, you have to change two things. Change yourself. Or change the job, right? And then, so love what you do is happy, right? You're happy. I'm doing. I, I do. I love what I do. What, what I what I, I love what I do. I'm happy. But uh, doing what you love, okay, it's it reverses to is freedom, okay. So you have freedom now, you know. I I doing what I love. These two are different, okay, different. You put two together, loving doing what you do, that is really a dream, right? Okay, put it all together. So what it means is ask why. Okay? It's a much scale. I just ask three times. Okay? If you do that one, you will keep it positive. Positive is very important because you keep it positive, then you will not waste energy for those things you worry about which do not point it to your goals. So you become much more efficient, then you're you're happier. Okay, so again because you come together, you're happy, you have freedom, you have the dream work you're doing. Okay, back to the story at the beginning. I talked about that the young, uh, young man going to grad school. That was me. That was me in 1982. So I grew up in the mountain area. It says the mountain. I took it from Google Map. Uh, I think it was 2019. I think it was 2019. I was giving a talk to, to somebody. I think I should make this map. Oh, I remember I was, doing, I was giving the presentation for my uh, ASM president uh, uh, dinner. So I, I see I grew up in this big mountain here. Okay, this tons the it tons the it tons the mine. 
you did the digging tungsten out of the ground and the, you know, uh, and dress it and uh, make tungsten oxide and so forth. It's a huge mountain there. I lived there for 15 years. I didn't get out of the mountain. Uh, when I was 15 years old, my brother, my elder brother went to the countryside because the Cultural Revolution. So I, I visited him once I was, uh, when I was 15. That was the first time I got out of, out of the mountain there. And then a couple of years later, after that, oh, it was actually one year after that, I went to a, 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 a university called Central South University, and Chessy as he visited when he when she was the questionnaire, she stayed there for one month. It's very hot, very hot place, and very hot dishes too. The meals are extremely hot. So you see, I grew up here at this mountain. I, I went to this place. It's about the two hundred kilometers there. I went to that place, spent four years, and then I decided the grad school. I think grad school is what I want to do. Then, you know, there's, there's a channel, I look at different places, where should I go? I decided to go to Beijing, so I took the entry exam. I, I, I had to change the major, because I was in a different major of this material science, then material science. I was in the process material At that time, you know, Chinese, they are different, completely different schools, different colleges even. So I decided to go there, so I had to take a lot of courses, right? I studied a lot of courses myself and so forth. Uh, changing major is hard. So I went to the, this school uh, in 1982. As I mentioned at the beginning, my professor was on vacation, so he, he was not there. So when he came back, I was so eager to see him, right? I was a young student, I had to talk with my professor. And uh, that's what he told me, because I, I was for another major, right? And usually you like your student for your major. So, you know, better, better education, better foundation. So he was honest. He was very honest. He said, you know, I didn't hire you. I didn't recruit you. You were assigned to me because nobody wanted you. Well, he didn't say the last sentence, but that was the main thing. Right? <laughs> he didn't want uh, Nobody wanted you, so they just gave you to me because I was on vacation. You know, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do, you know? A, a young student there. Okay? But of course, the, the story is that we did very well. But we became very good to... Uh, we, we associate each other very well. If there are many years, we still have a lot of communications and, uh, and so forth. So, so that was the story. The story is that I can focus on your goal. What is the goal there? The goal is that I want to get a grad school, I get a good study, I want to get a good work done in my grad school. Yeah. So anything else? You, know, you don't have to spend too much time on it. If you do, you do something well and the things will can be right. So focus on your goal. That's really the message I had. So after that one, that's the University of Science Technology Beijing and that was I met my wife when I got married and so forth. Then I went to Sweden and it's another very interesting story is that it's Beijing, it's Moscow and I, 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 at that time, you know, we, I, well, we didn't have much money and they also had a lot of time, right? In the summer, in, 20, in, in 1987, I decided to go to the train. So I took the train from Beijing, goes to the north part of China and goes to Mong that's from Mongolia, I sat here and it goes through here to Siberia and all the way to Moscow, taking me five days. Actually, I think it's more than five days. It's actually six days to get there. That was a lot. I made a lot of friends on the train and they, and they had a lot of fun. People, it was a lot of good. I, I don't have contact with them anymore, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, eat on, eat, uh, add food on the train for seven days, six days. Then we spent that night at Moscow, went to Moscow University, Red Square. And different places, and uh, those those people brought uh, took me go with them. Uh, that was very fun. And then I took another train from Moscow, and it all the way to Helsinki. Okay, uh, to Turku, then took a took a took a took a ferry from Finland to Stockholm. I stayed there for nine years. So we have two kids were were born there, and then uh, you know then stayed there for the song that was next for life. Right, was next what to do. I wanted to, I wanted to become a professor, but nobody gave me an interview, and it was hard in in Europe. Uh, so uh, we decided to come to the United States. So we went to Madison, Wisconsin. I wanted to send the professor after my wife a, a research social positions position, and so I, I took one too. And it, so it's so different. I, I so we we were thinking that you know we can we can. Come, we got to come to senior states, then decide what we want to do for our life. Should we go back to China or, or stay in the United States? And uh, then, of course, everything changed. 
and we, we liked you so much, we decided to stay here, they need to find a job. So I first found a job in Crest Tech in, in Chicago. That's why we stayed in Chicago for a few, for a few, few months. And even just before that, uh, before we formally started, I got off from Penn State. I stayed a few, 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 few months, then moved to Penn State. And uh, that was since the end of 1998, beginning of 1999. Okay, so the so question that now, I lived in three places. So I lived in China, uh, like 20, 20, over 20 years, about 10 years, about now. Here's the longest place I lived. And uh, these cultures are so different. So I, I tried to figure out what the difference, I used the one word to describe each of them. Uh, this one was just developed a few years back. Uh, people asked me the difference. So I thought I've got to give it very simple. So in the Asian culture, Asian culture is king, you know, emperor you have, thousand years history. So everybody, everybody's looking up, see what the king will tell people to do. And then in Europe, everybody's discussing, everybody's reasoning. Ah, oh, we should do this, we should do that, let's discuss, let's have a meeting. And so forth. It's always reasoning. And uh, so I love meetings there. Okay, a lot of meetings. I, I joined a couple of officers at meetings in our dorm, dormitory. That was fun to learn. And then you look, you look horizontally, so, flat, so the society is kind of flat. Okay. So, it's, so then to me, I say it's individualism. So that's what I found that since I came here in 96, I thought, wow, this is so different. It's the individualism. And again, the words here, it's, it's in Chinese, if some Chinese say this, this means king, this means reasoning, this means individual. And you look at inside, you look at yourself, you look down, you look at, look at what you can do with yourself. Okay? So I find it so, so striking, the difference of this. So why do I talk about this one? As people ask me for this one, but why do I really talk about it? It's really entropy. Okay? Entropy is so interesting. And uh, when I give a talk, my first, my first talk on entropy was actually back in 2014 when I got a Gibbs Award. I said, what are you going to talk about? So I just used entropy as my title. People said, wow, it's so one title with one word. I, was, I thought it was pretty fun. So high entropy, high disorder. We know that, right? Okay? So the second law of thermodynamics says that every irreversible spontaneous process produces entropy. So I always use this one as an example here. It's that, you know, I know most of you are not married yet, but when you get married, you have a house with active kids. Kids will make a mess. Make a mess in the home, right? That's good. You should be very happy. Why? Because your kids follow your kids follow the natural laws. That means they're natural. If they don't make a mess, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a big, big problem. That means that the kids have some problem. Okay? So you need to go to see doctors and fix try to fix it. Okay? So it's mess is is good. Okay. And of course, the problem is that it becomes a mess at the end of life. That's the highest disorder you can get. It's death. Everything can be dead. They can be decomposed, you know. they all back and back. No, the natural, right? Nature. So it's death. The death is the highest order of life. That's the, that's the entropy. Okay. So we wrote a paper a few years back, uh, 2019, with people about mild scale entropy. So entropy is a mild scale. Okay. Now, then we come out of the concept of the, the entropy. That's the term as it came out just last year. We gave a talk, I gave a talk about my entropy. People say, oh, you should give a name to this one. No, we said we have, we have fig, we're trying to figure out a name. That a person said, oh, Zentropy is a good name. Because Zen stands for, uh, not Zikwe, Z stands for partition function, right? We use the, our, our approach is the partition function approach. We were thinking of large scale entropy, mentropy, you know. It's not a good, but this guy says entropy is good. It's the sum of state. What does it mean? So look at the entropy you have. This you, you, this you learn from thermodynamics book. Entropy is equal to kp log omega. But this actually is it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a kind of system. Uh, it's an idea system. For non-idea system, you have this. It's, a, it's actually kb pk log pk. What's pk? pk is the probability of one configuration. So how the it, two equations uh, be consi reconcile is that when every configuration has the same probability, then it goes back there. So that means this equation has a big assumption is that all configurations have the same energy. Of course, that is not correct. We know that, right? Because if the ground state has low energy, everybody else has high energy. Okay. 
So, but however, this, this is for the configuration of energy between the configurations. So what about the entry about the configuration itself? So it turns out that one is what we're missing in some dynamic books. Okay, is that entropy of the system maps have two parts. One part is the configuration, configuration we talk about here, but another part is the configuration itself has entropy. Okay, so that's all the entropy is about. So it's, it's, it's after you add the two together, then we do the integration of energy capacity. We, we talk about this one all the time too, but we never connect these two together because these two, this two are not equal, you see. You have to add this part that makes them equal. So that's our Zentropy theory. Yeah. We find it so powerful. I assume that this one you can predict anything you want in the, in the system. So you can think about energy. Okay. Then you go back to calculate the partition function. I want to say this is our paper we published last year, or accepted last year for publication. This is the first time we talk about Zentropy. This is the, re, the YouTube channel, YouTube video. is the Zentropy was suggested by a postdoc from University of Buffalo, when I was giving talk at the Duke University. So we talk about the, 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 the stress we have for the, for the, uh, for the, due to COVID, right? Without COVID, I probably would not have the Zentral B term yet. Oh, uh, you know, everything has two sides. That's very important. So that, what, that's what it means. So everything you have is the best you have. Okay. Enjoy what you have. Okay. Last slide. Quotes on the summary. If you keep trying some new ways, you will like you are likely going far. So don't stop trying new things. Doing your best at this moment, that's the best you have, will be put in the best place for next time. You have to push left and wrong. Of course some people may not be happy. Otherwise you'll be pushed around by life. Everything you do becomes the legacy of your history. Okay. And I want to say actually this you see all my comments here are very positive, right? Chelsea actually made a lot of suggestions when I gave this talk. He said, Dr. Liu, you know, you are positive. You should make all your statements positive too. That's one. For example, everything you do, what I had before, is that everything you do become you know, the hostage of everything you do in, the, in history. Okay? Now change the legacy. It's more positive. Thank you, Chelsea, for all these good comments you have. Okay? Everything, everything you every, enjoy everything you do. Okay? Then, Another one that I have one minute of a topic in that story is the next slide. This is my AS and President a coin I made. I put it in my slogan here, do better than your best. Okay? So the best is what you have had. The better is what to come. Okay. So your past is your legacy. What you do now will make you better tomorrow. So you put your future, your present, and your past all together become you. So the final story, the 10 pancakes story. Again, many students put the 10 pancakes story in their thesis. Okay. Uh, I, want, I, I didn't do this one this time. I was, uh, didn't have time, but I wanted to sang a chair and say, put it in. Okay, I do. 10 pancakes story. 10 pancakes story. So after the market, the farmer went to the market. The farmer sell, sold all his stuff. He went to a restaurant for a meal. He ordered one pancake and he enjoyed it. But he was not a fool. Then he ordered the second pancake and added, but still not a fool. And he, after the ninth pancake, he was still not a fool, but I got frustrated. So he had nine pancakes at home, I only do, at home, right? At his home, his wife makes a much big pancake. And he, he, he doesn't need nine pancakes. So he decided to order the tenth pancake. And finally, it was full. He should be happy, right? No, but he was very angry. He was extremely angry. You see, he was happy. He just so at it. And he got frustrated. He got very angry. Why does he get angry? He called the rest restaurant man owner and demanded the refund for the nine pancakes that he had. The owner said, why, why should we give you the money back? He told the, ma the manager, he reasoned that it was a tense pancake that made him full. The nine pancakes he had didn't help. So the, the owner should have sold him, should have sold him the tense pancake alone. Then he only need to pay one, one tenth of money. That's the story. So what does that mean? That means you're going to struggle, right? You're, you're starting to grasp, you're happy, 
Oh, you just said me to give well, they didn't get over any good result. Get frustrated. They are saying, shit. Okay. You should have said, you should have started at the beginning. Just take the tense pancake. Of course, that doesn't work, right? You know that. Because the tense pancake, the success of the tense pancake builds on the previous nine pancakes you have. But if you give up, right? If you give up the ace pancake, who will never get satisfied? Okay. Well, that's all I have. I want to thank you for your for your attention. And if I have any questions, we probably have a few minutes. Great. You have a lot, a lot of applause. Thank you so much for that engaging talk, Dr. Lee. Students here in the audience, um, please do. If you guys have questions, feel free to come up and ask them. If anybody on Zoom has questions, you're welcome to, to put them in the chat. I know Mike, my husband, Mike Cargather, logged in, but he logged out before the 10 pancake story. And he's, he's quite sad because that's his favorite story. <laughs> I, he's been known to wander around the house saying, I need my 10th pancake. You know, what's my 10th pancake right now? He can't figure it out. So <laughs> that's, what, that's our favorite. Any questions? Well, you have an email, you can always email me if you want to chat. What was the most challenging part in your journey before achieving your most stable state? Metagraphically speaking. I think it's, steady state really comes in after I uh, came to Penn State. When I become a assistant professor, I think that was the kind of uh, uh, become uh, more stable, so to speak. Yes, that's kind of a steady state. Then you, you have more students coming. You know, I, that was very interesting. That uh, getting a faculty position in the United States, in the world, anywhere, is extremely, extremely difficult. Because there are few positions, there are so many people. Typically, in a faculty position opening, there are hundred, if two hundred people apply, they are all well qualified people, have good publications, good research. So it's extremely hard to get into the system. That's the biggest challenge. That's why I mentioned in New York, I applied to many in the United States. Nobody even gave me an interview. Right? Of course, I'm far away. So when I come to the United States, I applied, I got interviews. Uh, but not able to give me an offer uh, to do it. And uh, that's the biggest bit of hurdle, I think, that uh, you get into. It. Well, you get into it if you are good at what you do, and then you will be, you work hard on that one, use Tim Pangi's story, <laughs> and they can do that, and then you'll be successful. Convicted states, okay, that's very important. So, what it means is that. Uh, at high at zero Kelvin, you have Guam State, Guam State, all other states will not show up. However, when you go to high temperature, other states, the, the, the energy difference between different states, if the energy is comparable to the KPT, this can be going to show up. The example is the magnetic. So if, suppose that zero Kelvin is a ferromagnetic. And when the temperature goes up, the other configuration with uh, which is anti but well, don't have to be anti fire magnetic, but of course, spin flipping. So, spin can start to flip. So, those states will have the energy comparable with the KBT. So, then those configurations will be seen by the system when it is observation. So, you have, you have a, think about this one, right? If we talk spin up or spin down, it is the 2 to the n power, and it will be the number of spins. So, if you have nine uh, items, uh, uh, atoms, like iron, so 2 to the 9 power is 512 configurations. So that wouldn't be about speed. So when you do experiments at high temperature enough, high enough temperature, you will see all 512 configurations in your experiment. So your observation is a mixture of all the configurations. So we found that was very critical because that's how the critical points 
critical point people talk about uh, frustration, right? They begin to have so many states, they frustrate each other, so the system becomes unstable. So that's our theory. Actually, that's our theory. If you look at the theory for critical point today, it's renormalization group theory. It's based about different fluctuations. But they don't have a way to predict that. So we have a way to predict it from first principles, from quantum mechanics, then assemble them together and predict the critical points quantitatively and compare with the experiment. And with, with good agreement with experiments, without any input for experiments, without the uh, feeding parameters. Any other questions from the audience? All right, well, let's give another round of applause. Thanks again, Dr. Lee. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Good luck for your grad study. It was great to see so many familiar faces online as well. Yeah, we have Bieglimski, yeah, we see Yung Jie Hu here. Uh, we a couple of people. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. All the best. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay.